I love to embellish. I really love to raise the surface of a piece, meaning that it's no longer just flat. I add an element of three-dimensionality to it. And I had this little piece left over from a larger piece, and I thought, you know, could I put that on an 8x8 eight eight frame and turn it into something, and if, I, if so, what can I do to it? So the first thing I thought was to really highlight the circles on it by putting in a uh, stuffed, raised um, spiral. And so I turned to my handy-dandy friend, the pipe cleaner. Um, some people call these chenille stems, depending on where you buy them. If they're pretty colors, they're usually a chenille stem. If they're white, they're usually a pipe cleaner. And um, they can do all sorts of magical things. I also like to use them as the basis or beginning of a piece of jewelry. So this can become a pin. I will bead it and then put a pin back on it. Or I can use this as an applique. I can applique it on, which would be very, very cool. The nice thing is, is that basically what I've got is a, is a stem or a stick, if you will, that is stiff. And when I bend it, it holds its shape. So you can't get that from rat tail. Um, having that chenille stem inside is what gives me that ability to hold a shape. These um, are very easy to make. And again, they just have so many wonderful uses. So let me show you how I do it and the little trick that I use to get the turning going without having to have any type of turning tool. So for th regular chenille stems um, that are this regular size, I think you can buy jumbo ones. So if they say jumbo, you're probably going to have to increase the um, width of your strips. Um, I cut my strips one and a quarter inches. If my fabric is very, very thick, like this fabric here, then I cut it one and a half inches. Um, but one and a quarter is plenty. And if you want it to be really tight, like this one, I wanted it to be tight and I wanted to try one and an eighth inch. It was a little harder to turn, um, but once I turned it, you know, I liked the tightness of it. So anywhere from an eighth, one and an eighth to one and a half, depending on the thickness of your fabric. So I'm going to take this strip and I'm going to fold it right sides together if it has right sides. Mine doesn't. And I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. I have also decreased the size of my stitch length so it's quite small so that um, this isn't going to poke through when I'm trying to turn it. Okay, now here's the trick. I'm going to take my chenille stem and I'm going to insert it in the end, but first I'm going to turn it over so that it has a soft tip instead of the rough metal. And I'm going to insert it inside the tube about an inch or so, and then I'm going to stitch it in place. I'm going to go back and forth several times because it's only got little thin wires in there and I want to make sure I catch that wire. So this is a loss, this portion down here at the bottom. It's, I can't use that portion, but it's what's holding the chenille stem into inside this tube. And I'm going to use that chenille stem now to turn the tube and this chenille stem will be inside. So I'm simply going to bunch that up and the hardest part is to get over that first hump. I use a pair of pliers. These are just jewelry making pliers. And I kind of pull that tube up over that hump with those pliers. You could use uh, any type of um, apparatus like a, a pair of tweezers. If you don't have pliers, you could use a pair of pliers from your um, toolbox if they're clean. But that first portion of getting that over that hump is the hardest part. But once that's done, you're golden. Okay, push that up there. And this is silk, so it, it's a loosely woven silk. It wants to kind of fray as I'm doing this. Okay, so once that's done, now I just scoot that down and I keep pushing this up onto the chenille stem and pushing it over. So not only am I turning my tube, 
but at the same time I'm um, getting my chenille stem inside my tube. This is television watching um, technique. Uh, so I'll sew a bunch of these and uh, then I'll go sit in front of a movie and turn them all. And there I have my chenille tube inside my turned tube and I'm ready to use it for whatever embellishment I want to use it for. Isn't that cool? So I can twist this into a spiral which is one of my favorite things to do and it will stay in shape. So I twist it into a tight spiral and then as I let go it will move into a looser one and I can use that as an embellishment. I always go back in because as you move it around some of the chenille comes out, clip that little bit out, then I can applique that in place. Another really fun thing to do is to put it here at angles that change in their length, short angles, longer angles, like so, and use that as an embellishment. So you can use these things to raise the surface of your quilts. You can use them on garments. They look amazing on jackets. They have a finished edge, so they're totally, totally launderable. You can satin stitch or zigzag stitch them on, not satin stitch, but zigzag stitch them on by machine instead of using them by hand. You can do it with a contrasting thread so you have the threads going over. It's just kind of endless what you can do with these wonderful turned tubes.